Hi, everybody. This is Kathy L. Murphy, the Pulpwood Queen. I'm reporting from my little house in the woods, Murphy's Law, and I'm redoing my living room. So we're in a different spot of it today. I'm opening it up. I've done a lot of things. But tonight, we're discussing a film starring Holly Hunter, who is just adorable, I've decided, um, in this film called Miss Firecracker. And it reminded me, took me all the way back now, this was filmed in 1989, and of course I graduated in 1974, but it reminded me all about the hometown Miss Eureka pageant, of which I was forced into with, by my mother when I was just a sophomore, and marching band and the parade in town and going to the county fair. So I brought out my baton. I did not have my fire baton, um, but I did bring my one with the streamer. I brought, my mother was a twirler in high school. So even though I wasn't a twirler, I was in band, but we all, my sisters and I all knew how to twirl because she taught us. But, and that brings me to my co-host, Robert Waltney. Now, Robert, before we talk about the film, Robert has, is a band kid too. But what he did in band is pretty amazing. Tell us all about it, Robert. Well, you know, back in the day, um, I played the trombone, but I was also the drum major. So Man, I directed, I I directed the band a, during halftime shows. I wish we had a photo because, I mean, you know, <laughs> I try. I think I tried out for drum major when I was a senior, but I did not get it. But I was um, clarinet in the marching band, and I, you know, I never picked up, I never did band in college, but I certainly loved it when I was in high school and it brought back the flood of memories. Now, this film starring Holly Hunter is a story about a young girl who probably didn't have a whole lot of chance. You know, she was taken in by her uh, aunt and her cousins and uh, she, <laughs> the poor little thing came to their house with ringworm <laughs> in her hair and all these things and her big dream her dream was to be like her older cousin elaine who was miss firecracker so she practiced and practiced and um the whole movie is about this and about the cousins all coming back to the hometown and this celebration that anybody that grows up in small town america would enjoy this film and can remember it. What what did what was the first? Did you watch it again, or how long ago was it before you watched it? Oh uh, God! So time? I've not. I, it's been a minute since I've watched. I think I watched it maybe two years ago, mm -hmm. uh, um, prior to Fourth of July. Um, you know what? I and, and it was as great as I remembered it. I, I enjoyed the film. It's it has it's it's comedy, but but it has elements of the gothic threaded through. You know just. <laughs> these fantastically sketched characters. You have Elaine, well, the, wealth, the wealthy cousin from Atlanta, and then you've got the sociopathic Delmont. <laughs> Delmont. Delmont was awesome in this film. And I, I I'm laughing because, you know, the love interest of Holly Hunter was just in the film we watched with um, uh, John Travolta. And, you know, he didn't look that much different, but I was trying, when was Urban Cowboy filmed? It was early 90s, so it was after Miss Firecracker. Right, so it was about in the same time frame, but he was perfect as the carny worker, and I, I loved his character and the dynamics, and he really didn't have a whole lot of parenting um, characters because they were all out of the picture. It was all just told from these young people's point of view. And I think everybody who ever went through school had the dream of being the cheerleader or the homecoming king or queen or the drum major, whatever, or even the hometown, you know, beauty queen. But I found the whole, even the dress shop was just brought me back to, we had two dress shops in my hometown that carried fabric. We had Jenna's Shacks and Jurassic's, and they were full department stores with the people that help you try your clothes. I miss those days. I have to tell you, it was just so much fun to go to the shoe store and have somebody, you know, fit your 
feet with shoes or go to the dress shop and help you pick out the special outfit that you were going to wear to whatever the homecoming dance or whatever. But Holly Hunter. Now, Holly has had quite a career. And, you know, I wish she was doing more things now because she's really, she's kind of like Sissy Spacek. You know, they're quirky, but when they're she's, in a film, all eyes you know, are she, on. She, she's done some series from some of the streaming networks there. I, I believe she played a part in um, a series called Succession that I loved. And I think it's going to be coming back for another season. She, Is it um, on Netflix? I'm not certain. It's either Netflix or Hulu, one of those. But, you know, she's been around. She's done a couple of these these series and you know she always plays great i love holly hunter oh she was really great we watched oh brother where art thou the uh, you know the other night she was fabulous in it the so it's called succession succession it yes okay i'm gonna look it up because i'd forgotten how wonderful she really was and i mean when she threw herself into this role i mean she went for it i mean when she was Miss going for Miss Firecracker. She made her hair as red as the elements in what my <laughs> have on my head. And I just, I, you know, I have to say that I love people that just go for it, you know, and are fearless. She's a fearless actor and she was great. It was well cast. Um, what was the criticism that you heard on this film? Oh, no, it was just, you know, you either liked the film or, or you didn't, you know, I think that you, you either have an interest in, in Southern stories or, or, or you don't, nothing specific. Um, you know, I, I, I loved the fact that, um, well, you know, you were talking about the dress shop. There's that right. sad scene where, where Carnell played by Holly Hunter goes in and she's looking for assistance. And of course, the, the shop ladies won't assist her. Of course, you know, she's a girl, you know, she was, came into the picture there into the city, to, like you said, taken in by her genteel um, cousins. And of course she grew up promiscuous, you know, a girl with a bad reputation. And of course she's trying to overcome that. And uh, it's something that, you know, folks really won't let her let go of her past. And more than anything, that's what she wants to do. But one of my, I think one of the quirkiest elements of the film for me is when she seeks the assistance of Popeye Jackson to make her costumes, <laughs> played by Alfre Woodard. And of course the oh. only- the, the only the, the only experience that Popeye's had at making costumes is for her pet uh, bullfrogs. <laughs> oh my God, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. She goes, people buy them as pets and I make them little outfits. <laughs> and it was weird because just this week, somebody or last week, somebody shared a picture of a bullfrog that they found and it was like, it looked almost human. It was so big. And I just thought, oh my gosh, I used to dress my cats up, but I never thought about dressing up a frog. Did you? No, no never. <laughs> never, but it was absolutely priceless. And those 80s dresses, when I first moved to Jefferson, Texas was 1987. And then that was that prom year, they did a Gone with the Wind theme and they had it upstairs at the ballroom of the library. And I remember I went down to see, I, I grew up in Kansas and I think we maybe studied the Civil War maybe three days in school, you know. There wasn't a whole lot of talk on it. So I, you know, and I grew up with watching Gone with the Wind. So I went down there and I was just flabbergasted because all the girls went to prom in hoops. They had hoop dresses and off the shoulder and then that big 80s hair. And I was just like, I think the entire time I went to Jefferson, you know, uh, lived in Jefferson, I would watch what people wear to prom. And the last prom I saw was one of my daughters was going to prom. And that day they had a John Deere tractor parade on Main Street and they parked all the tractors on Main Street, so like a car show. And it was outside this, you know, beautiful New Orleans type convention center. And the girls who went to prom, this was uh, the 2000s. So they were wearing the sequin, you know, cut to the belly button, you know, I was 
but the guys had on i swear to god tuxedos with ball caps and high top tennis shoes and they were all out there taking pictures on the tractors and i go you can't make this stuff up i you know so when you we people who aren't from the south that see shows like this they think it's parody but it's really not because they actually you know as long as i've lived here in east texas i've seen all the elements of that film i've seen the fights i've seen the um you know the people making fun of the people from supposedly the wrong side of the tracks i've seen all that but i've also think it tells you a lot about the human um condition in a microcosm because small town you see it playing out and I have to say, what did you think about the vocabulary of Delmont? I loved his word choices. In fact, there were a few words I don't think I've ever heard before. <laughs> Even when I watched it the first time, I think I missed that. And then he made a, a remark in the film, I try to find, and I hope I get this right. He said, when I try look at a, a woman, I try to find the one thing that um, I don't know if it was how he worded it, but makes them have excellence or, and then the guy, what was the name of the guy that was the carny that, um, oh, what's his, what's his name? He said, well, when I look at a girl, I look at, like he was referring to the Holly Hunter role, somebody who can take it on the chin, you know? And boy, she held up the brave face, that's for sure. But she gave it her all. She did. She did. Have you ever had an instance where you came in dead last? <laughs> in something? No, but, you know, I mean, I remember growing up in, um, you know, in Cairo, Georgia, and, you know, I wasn't, you know, an, ath an athletic kid. So I remember being picked last sometimes for certain games, you know, when you would pick teams and I would just be standing there the very last one thinking, somebody please pick me. I was always picked dead last and one of my best friends was too. And so we got in our head, um, we were always popular girls, you know, and we were always in all the clubs and everything, but our senior year, we realized that only one senior was trying out for cheerleader. And I thought, we're gonna have cheerleaders and they're all gonna be sophomores and juniors. So my best friend, which I, you, you will meet Heidi, uh, we decided we would try out for cheerleaders. And I got one of the popular cheerleaders that was graduating, Shelly Burke, to teach me a routine. <laughs> and it was so funny because I am not athletic, so I could not do a cartwheel or the splits, but boy, I could cheer, you know? <laughs> and of course, neither one of us got it. And, uh, but I was that kind of kid like Holly Hunter. I always tried, you know, I went for the Miss Eureka pageant. They didn't even have participation statues. I did not win, you know, I thought I would be a homecoming candidate, nope did not happen you know all these disappointments in life but i think when i look back on it now i think that's what you kind of get um and at the end of the film i don't want to give anything away but holly hunter you know she recognizes that she goes i always wanted to be one of them and to fit in and to find my place and then i i realized that maybe i just need to be me you know I think when people just figure out that if you just try to be you, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't have gone back and tried out for cheerleader or, or all the other things that I did, I'd still do it. But I think I, I think now looking back on it, I'd have a little different attitude because everything's a learning experience. And, uh, but it's a sweet film and it touches on a lot of things that you could talk about it talks about you know the race um issue i mean there's a few things that were said well i don't mean to be unkind but she was chinese and she's black and you know so and i was just like oh my gosh you know 
and she was very, she had a wonderful routine, but um, it's all, it's really interesting. But we, in some ways we haven't changed at all. And in other ways we've changed tremendously. So. Well, you know, the, the, the uh, Miss Firecracker was based on the play by Beth Henley. Uh, the Miss Firecracker contest, I believe was the name of the play. And uh, Beth Henley won the Pulitzer Prize for her play, uh, Crimes of the Heart, which was adapted for a film, which Is I love. that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was with Sally Field. And wasn't Sissy Spacek in that one too? Sissy, Sissy Spacek, Diane Keaton. And actually I'm going to watch that film um, when we're done this evening, after we watch, after we discuss Miss Firecracker. That would be a great one to watch because I haven't seen it in years, but anything those women are in, I'm going to watch. I just watched Hampstead with Diane Keaton uh, on Netflix last night, and it was lovely. A wonderful story about a woman who loses her husband and, um, and lives in London in a very elite section of town, and she's kind of lost. And Diane Keaton plays a different role, and she becomes interested in this man who's living in the woods behind her high-rise apartment you've got to watch it everybody that's watched it loved it and it was it's it's a sweet film you know i like films that are about a story so many of the films that they're putting out now are all about action and comic books and animation and i when i was a kid i liked that thing but now i want I want a great story and it doesn't have to be complicated. It just has to be real, you know, it has to be really authentic. Crimes of the Heart, that would be a good one to watch. Right. And, and it was Diane Keaton, Sally Field. Wasn't there four? Um, a series of sisters. Yeah, well, there's definitely Diane Keaton, Sissy Spacek. You know what? And I cannot remember. I know the. I know who it is. It's a Southern actress. I cannot think of her name, but she's really good. In fact, she was in. I'll do, a, I'll do a quick Google. Yeah, because she was in another film that I adored too. But I, I'm like you, Robert. I really, I really enjoy the Southern Gothic films myself because I don't know. There's something. Jessica Lang. Yes. And Kath Harper. Okay. Is it on Netflix or where did you find it? Um, well, so you could probably find uh, Crimes of the Heart on Netflix, most definitely. Yeah. That's where I watched Miss Firecracker. And I, it had been so long since I'd seen it that I couldn't really remember the story, but I remember that Mary Steenburgen, her character stuck in my mind, but it was funny this time when I watched it, I was really into the Alfie Woodward character and the, uh, the, the boy cousin and um, of course, Holly Hunter. You, when she comes on camera, you just can't take your eyes off of her. There's something, she's adorable. She's adorable. Um, I, th I think I've seen just about all of her films, uh, but I'm gonna have to go and you know, do that IMBG or what D, whatever it is, and see what all she's done. I haven't seen Succession. Well, now you've given me the shows that I'm going to watch tonight. And I, I had to laugh today as I'm going through everything and cleaning out drawers. I will be showing you. Is it next week that we're starting the Doris Day? I believe so. Let me do quick, take a quick check of our calendar. I actually have an autographed picture of Doris Day. Wait, actually Barefoot in the Park next week. Oh, we're doing the Jane Fonda movie. Okay, well, that's perfect too. I love her and look at her. She's in her 80s and still going with uh, Grace and Frankie. And I hope they do another series. I've watched them all. And I think she is a very, uh, she's a serious actress, but I really like her when she does the comedy. I think it's it's kind of like Cary Grant, Rock Hudson. Every they could do the very serious roles, but the roles that I loved the most were when they did the comedy. 
the comedy roles. And I always like to see comedy actors sometimes do straight roles too. They do them very, they do, they, you always get so many surprises. So do you remember the favorite part of this film, Miss Firecracker? Oh gosh, favorite. Well, yeah, it's hard to say just one favorite part. You know, I think I that I was the character of the Mary Steen version plays Elaine. You know, there are parts of I think she's probably the least likable character in the film. She's very shallow, but yeah. she was very insecure. Very insecure. She, you know, she comes she comes back to give the lecture to the contestants, and it's titled "My Life as a Beauty." <laughs> I, you know, if somebody did that today, they would be probably booed and throw peanuts out and popcorn, whatever. Uh, oh. I just can't even imagine anybody getting up and giving that speech and that dress she had on and the hat with the posies and the, the whole Southern Belle thing was uh, priceless. Um, and then I don't know if you remember they had the woman who won the previous year got up and gave a speech too. <laughs> and just watching their gowns, just, but the Popeye character was, was Alfie Wood, Woodward. I, I had completely forgotten she was in that film and my gosh, she is flat, you know, making her, you know, everything she's in nowadays is just so uh, award winning and, and everything. But, this film, I'm trying to think, 1989, I was trying to think, I, I think that was about the time I was pregnant with um, um, my oldest daughter, because she was born in 1990, so I was probably watching a lot of movies then, and I just thought it was just a sweet movie, in the same way that Steel Magnolia's it was a sweet Southern story, but there were elements that were very dark and sad. I mean, he was in a psychiatrist ward and we didn't really get a clear vision of what put him there other than he had a lot of anger against the mother. Mm -hmm. um, and who had, a, who, had a, who had a pituitary issue. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting story. You think that's true? Do you think? I don't know, but it, it, it certainly was hysterical. It's a hysterical. It sounds like an crazy. urban myth to me that they put the monkey gland in and and she started growing long hair all over her body. But who knows? <laughs> who knows? It was so. Beth Henley is Beth the Henley. person who wrote the screen. Mm -hmm. Would has she written any other? films or plays that you know yeah, she's done uh let's see let me do a quick search her name is sounds so familiar i wonder if she's an author too i'm so she was born in 1952 she's a playwright screenwriter and you know she was an actress as well um let's see so she's got quite a lot of so her, her filmography she was an actress in the film swing shift in 1984 she was a co-screenwriter for True Stories, screenwriter for a film called Nobody's Fool. Then she wrote the screen. Nobody's Fool? Oh, okay. Uh, wow. Crimes of the Heart, of course. She adapted the play. Uh, Trying Times of Family Tree, Miss Firecracker, and It Must Be Love, which was in 2004. I don't uh, remember that film at all. And she is, um, she was born in Jackson, Mississippi, and she is presently 69 years old. Yep. And I thought it was really interesting. I'd forgotten that this film was set in Yazoo City, uh, Mississippi. And you may not know the connection to Yazoo City, but that is where one of my favorite authors is from, Willie Morris. Mm. He wrote Last of the Southern Girls and My Dog Skip and, oh my gosh, New York Days. And he, wa he went to the University of Texas and then he went on to work for one of the biggest magazines in New York. He was the editor and he was a Southern boy and he just talked um, very Southern, but he was a good writer. Everything that he wrote, I, I think I have all of his books. Well, and and Pulp Queen writer, Bryn McLean won the, um, 
the prestigious Willie Morris Award for her novel, uh, One Good Mama Bone. I know, I know. The, the two awards that always impress me the most are the Willie Morris and the Harper Lee. And we just had Carolyn Haynes who won the Harper Lee on our Writers Club. And I just look at, I've been looking at all of our authors recently. They're winning awards like crazy. I mean, Bren just won uh, this very prestigious French award. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's very satisfying to me to know that these authors went from total unknown first time first book authors and now they're winning all these awards. It's really wow. great. Uh, that's why we've started featuring them in our magazine. So, hey, you've got your book coming up, The Cicada Tree. Let's, let's get that into some- Fingers crossed. Let's, maybe it'll win an award or two. I hope it goes to film because the whole time I was reading it, I could, I could hear the music. I could visually see it. And of course I could hear the, you say, do you say cicadas or do you say cicada? I say cicada. Cicada. We say locust, Becca. <laughs> so whatever. And, you know, we've had a, this is the 17th year of the cicadas uh, being out there, but I haven't heard any yet, but it's just July. It's usually August that we hear so many of them here, but it's definitely been hot enough for them and, and things, but um I'm, I'm looking forward to your book and I'm looking forward to, um, you know, hopefully this time of COVID is so hard for people to um, sell their books to film, but we had Marcy Hanna all this week who was on, has been on our Breathless Bubbles and Books and she, you know, her uh, book went to film and it was the last film that Cloris Leachman played in and she was fabulous in this film and it had Corbin Berenson and it had Melissa Gilbert mm -hmm. who everybody always thinks of her as Laura from you know the Little House on the Prairie series but she was she plays the grandma and the two little girls that were in the film it's a sweet southern movie too but it's got a little of that and it was filmed in Georgia uh maybe not far from where your hometown was um, they have better incentives in Atlanta and Georgia than they do in Texas now. So most of the films that are being done, they go, you know, yeah. they were doing them in Shreveport. In fact, at one time they were calling Shreveport Holly, uh, Hollywood South. So the, do they have a nickname for Atlanta for the film business? No, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything in particular they call it. Yeah, I mean, I think that they, some do refer to it as Hollywood of the South. Um, well, I, the reason why I asked is because, you know, I've been watching these Bollywood films. Well, now there's like five different types of films being done in India. In, in India, there's Bollywood, there's Tollywood, there's Pollywood. They've got all these different, <laughs> different names because they're, the country's large and has so many people that they're almost competing with each other the Tollywood is the Southern India and the Tamil language. And so I was confused because they'll do a film in Hindi in Bollywood, and then they'll turn around and do it in Tollywood in Tamil, which is, a, there's 500 and some dialects of, of language in India. And I go, I hope I don't have to come up with 500 different letters of, and we're pulpwood. So I'm thinking, my gosh, if we could just take all of our books to film, we would just be pulpwood instead of Hollywood. In fact, mm -hmm. that was one of our themes, Robert, years ago. We did a Hollywood themed. I even had a gigantic canvas painted of the Hollywood Hills, but instead of the Hollywood sign, it said pulpwood. It, we, everybody took their pictures in front of it. It was so cool. But then when I went to take it home, it was too large to, it was 30 foot long. Yeah. So I, even rolling it up, I couldn't get it in my car. It would have stuck back a couple of car lengths. So it's still, as far as I know, at the art gallery where we had the ball. <laughs> up in storage somewhere the, uh, but uh, the artist who did it did a fabulous job but 
okay, so we have all of these people that were in that film have gone on to some pretty good successes. I mean, um, the young man who played the brother, of course, he's, gosh, yeah, he's been, yeah, yeah, he's been in a lot of films and uh, he's really good. This, how old was he in that film, do you think? Oh gosh, a baby, he was a baby. Like in his 20s? Yeah, I would think so, back in 1989, yeah. I think I read one time that he's really tall too. He's he like is. six foot, mm -hmm. but Holly Hunter, man, she's tiny. She's like a five foot little thing. And uh, Mary Steenburgen, you know, is, is now married to the uh, Ted Danson that used to be on Cheers and, um, but it's, I imagine most people, young people that are watching this film today probably wouldn't even know who these people were. Um, but they are still doing great films. And so I'm going to follow your lead and I'm going to watch that Crimes of the Heart tonight. Then I'm going to go looking for that secession. Succession. And, I, there's either a one or two seasons, I can't recall, but at some point Holly Hunter comes in. What does she play? What kind of character does she play? Playing a, she's a consultant to this extremely wealthy family. Succession centers around this, this very complex, wealthy New York family with lots of family problems, infighting, backbiting. And Holly Hunter is a business advisor who happens into, um, into the family. And it's, I don't know where Holly Hunter's from, but it's hard to imagine her as a New Yorker. I don't, I think her accent's pretty, if I recall, I don't believe that it's, um, you know, her, her home accent in, in succession. Which reminds me, you know, Sissy Spacek grew up about 15 minutes from where I live in Gilmer, Texas. There's a street named after her. And it's interesting. She did a film set in Kansas. What was the name of it? It was like Badlands. She did the Western and then she did another one set up in Kansas City, but she made her start by going to New York City. I read her biography and she went up there because she, everybody thought she sounded like Loretta Lynn. And it's ironic that years later, she gets picked to play Loretta Lynn for Coal Miner's Daughter. Mm -hmm. I just, all those little connections that are made, but I, she's one of my favorite, uh, actors too because I've really everything that you see them in you love it's kind and I was thinking to myself as I was watching this movie you know who else would have been great in this role is um our our favorite little uh gypsy Rosalie I think Natalie Wood would have played that role really well um because she was a quirky little girl, but she turned into such a beauty, you know, I just. I could see, um, I could see Reese Witherspoon playing the Carnell role, you know, if you, if they'd done it a little like in the 90s. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, it's interesting when they do these remakes. I, I have watched so many films in foreign films now in India. I'm finding out that like Devidas is one of my favorite films that I've watched. And I found out that that was not, that was a remake. So I went back and I watched the 1950 some version of the film. And it's like, it was wonderful, but I heard the guy who starred in the role talking about it one time and he went on to become a director and stuff. And he said that, you know, of course they want to remake movies because look at all the special things that they can do now in films that you couldn't do back then. It was a very simple story. And the Devdas is one of my favorite films because it is like on the grand scale of Cleopatra. I mean, it's got these homes that are just like all made of stained glass and horses with plumes and wealthy people in costumes and dancing. And it's kind of like, you know, when they remade The Great Gatsby. Did you see the new one with uh, yeah. 
Uh, I everybody gave it a hard time. I love that film. I like the. I actually like the reinterpretation of it. I thought that it was fun. Yeah. You know. I I did. I really liked it too. But I'm a big Fitzgerald fan, and I and I who else, another author who is like him now that I've kind of jumped on the bandwagon for is that um, his name is. Uh, um, he wrote the, gosh, Amor, Amor Towel, A-M-O-R-T-O-W-L-E-S. And he wrote The Gentleman from Moscow. Um, he's, he's really got that same kind of feel that Fitzgerald did in his writing. But I like to read about people that are a lot different than me. But I could certainly relate to everything that was in this film. Uh, Miss, F I want, keep wanting to call it Little Miss Firecracker, but that was another film that came out later about the little girl who's now all grown up that I watched too, that she just wanted to be in pageants. And um, your parents didn't put you in pageants when you were a kid, did they? No, well, they didn't really. Um, child pageants really weren't a thing in Cairo, Georgia. And if they were, I'm surprised because they're a big thing, and boys are in them here in Texas. And now they, they have, now they do that. I, I don't. I recall there being, you know, there was like one pageant called Little Miss Christmas Carol. So there were, but but I know, and they would do it around Christmas time. And I had two neighbors actually. One of the older sisters first won Little Miss Christmas Carol. And if you won this, and I was so jealous because if you won this. Little Miss Christmas Carol, you got to be on this fabulous flight in the Cairo Christmas Parade. <laughs> and, and so it was wonderful. So more than anything, I wanted to ride a float you know, and, and wave. Well, you know, and, and you know, the wave. And I, I finally had it explained to me. You know why they wave like this? Because when you wave like the way I do, the waddle on your arm shakes. So they've learned how to wave like this so you won't show the, you know, you're the waddle on your arm. I thought that was funny. I never knew why. I could never figure out why they wave like this. Miss America always would just have a gloved hand and just cup her hand and do it like this. And when I wave at people, I just, you know, wave like a, crazy person. Now back home in Kansas, people don't wave. They just have their hand on the steering wheel and they go, they just raise a finger. Or, or like, in Canada, Georgia, you just kind of. Yeah. Acknowledge that you're passing somebody, but you don't, you know, and we used to honk and I don't think they do that anymore too. When you pass somebody, you know, you'd honk. If somebody did that now, I'd probably jump out of my uh, car seat. So anyway um so was this holly hunter supposed to be a senior in high school was that the deal no i think no i think that she was i think she was a young adult i think that you know you were you would age out of it i'm not quite sure no, so carnell actually i'm looking now was 24 so it was it was the last year that she would be age eligible for miss firecracker and of course her rep that she was called because of her reputation miss hot tamale <laughs> <laughs> and she the limb than anything to transition to Miss Firecracker. Oh, poor little thing, you know. And she had to wear that yellow cap, you know, that from a distance that looked like she had yellow hair. I, yeah. I, that just. And Mandy Haynes emailed me, and she says, "Oh, my favorite line was the snowing." And I'm not going to tell anything about it because everybody's got to watch this film. So for all of those that are going to be listening, we post these um, each week up on the Kathy L. Murphy channel on YouTube so people can jump on board. We ask you all to watch the film either before uh, or after. And you can comment, subscribe and comment. We love to hear. I, every once in a while I get somebody go, I've never seen that film before. And they just feel, so we like to have more discussion. We like to have more people on board because we certainly have fun, don't we, Robert? We do. We have a really good time. And I, 
I was cracking up. Um, the woman who was helping with the pageant went on to be in one of Linda Bloodworth Thomason's oh, television shows. Ann Wedgworth. Oh my God. I love everything she's in. She's a character actress and she always plays, you know, the Southern um, beauty queen, but not real smart. You know, uh, she played the wife of this southern gentleman in evening shade she was hilarious and the and the very breathy neighbor in three's company that's right i forgot all about that but and so still magnolias um yes. made the um the rattlesnake cake <laughs> oh no the possum cake she it didn't was have it enough. was armadillo armadillo she didn't have an, she didn't have enough counter space for a rattlesnake <laughs> she and when she whacked its rump off the tail part off and that blood red into uh, i have to tell you i took my girl scouts down um when they were in the third grade to go to pilgrimage in natchitoches louisiana and they have the river road with all the homes and they have docents who dress up in all these outfits you know southern antebellum outfits and we were going through and there was just a lot of this one shade of pink and i finally said did you girls was this from a wedding they go yes it was this was from the wedding in steel magnolias uh our city i I can't remember, I think they were donated to the city for pilgrimage, but they were in the shades of bashful and blush. <laughs> and every teenage girl who's a docent in those homes wears those Southern Bell, you know, studio props from Steel Magnolias. It just cracked me up that, um, and if you ever go down there, there's, all the locals were in that film, so they all have great stories. In fact, the woman who was at the hotel where I was staying at one time when I was a book rep and calling on the bookstore there, she had the most unusual glasses I've ever seen. It was a precursor to the glasses that didn't have frames and they were kind of trapezoidal and everything. And I go, I looked at her and I said, you know, I've those glasses are so unusual. I've seen them before and she goes, Yes, you have. You saw I wore them when I was in the film Still Magnolias. I said, that's where I saw those glasses because they're so one of a kind. She goes, I'll never get rid of them because they don't make them anymore. And she just has new glass put in them. But, um, you know, you can just, I don't know where they film that movie or that home or anything, but you could just have a lot of fun just going around to all the places like, the home from Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte or now the home for Gone with the Wind is not there. Only things there in Atlanta is what the door, the big doors or something. But it would be fun to go around to all those movie sets of where they did all these homes like in Beaufort. When I went when Jonathan Ho took me around Beaufort, he showed me where they did the big chill, you know, the home they did the big chill in and all these different stories of the homes that were in certain movies, even Forrest Gump. It's all very fascinating. So, well, you know, the, um, you know, the, the Medea films. Yes. Um, well, the Medea's home is just like five minutes from here. No way. you got to go by and take a picture. And send I will. I will. It's just right I love, I just love everything that Tyler Perry ever does. In fact, I will, tell on myself when I went first went through my divorce I watched one Medea film after another because it would make me laugh so hard because what was the one where where she's she's so angry um and it has the hot tub scene in it <laughs> the, the, the diary of a man yes that one just cracked me up but I I would love to meet Tyler Perry he's He's, uh, you know, if, I think he's retired. He's not doing the plays or anything anymore as Medea, is he? I, or is Medea yeah. done? I'm not certain if he's done with Medea, but he's still, I uh, saw him in a mainstream film recently. Um, he might not be doing Medea. But that character is priceless. And it's just a couple doors down from you. 
Yeah, uh, you know, I, I pass it some if I um, if I'm traveling a certain way, I, I go by it all the time. Well, you'll have to do that. Then you'll have to watch Southern Gothic on. I think I saw it on Hulu because the first show I watched is set right here on the Triple Murder. <laughs> I go, oh my God, and I had never heard about that. Never heard. I've lived here now almost eight years, and I'd never heard anybody ever mention three teenagers that well they were in college three college kids were murdered out at lake hawkins which is just a few minutes down the road and i'd never heard that before until i'm it's just the weirdest thing in the world to be watch a show and then you see the sign jesus welcomes you to hawkins texas and you're going oh my god that's where i live and we do have a sign that says Jesus welcomes you to Hawkins, Texas. It's also the home of um, Aunt Jemima. The, the woman who used to play Aunt Jemima on the commercials and everything is from Hawkins. Mm -hmm. And there's even a historical road plaque by where she grew up and where she lived. And now they're saying, you know, they took that image off of everything because it's considered, you know, uh, culturally inappropriate and everything. The family here was pretty upset about it because she provided, I think, for a lot of her family when she was doing that role. So, you know, there's good with some things and there's bad with some things. So uh, you don't have your old drum majorette. Uh, I do not. I, I don't have any of those things anymore. Long I mean, do they even make batons anymore with streamers? I don't know that they make them with streamers, um, but you know, twirling's still a big thing in the South. It is. I have a cousin that was my mother's cousin who won the national twirling competition. Twirling was really big in my hometown, but I think it's still kind of big around here, but it's a Southern thing. I think I had a girl come one year to girlfriend weekend and she was going to fire a baton twirl. I can't remember what the occasion was, but then we decided it was probably not a good idea to do that <laughs> in an enclosed space. We, and it was too cold to go outside in January, but we are going to be watching barefoot in the park next week, which was filmed in 1960. I'm thinking 60s, yes, starring lo the lovely Jane Fonda and Robert Redford. It will be fun. I haven't seen that one in years. Maybe, I think I watched it when I first moved here. I went through a whole old movie thing where I was just watching one right after the other. And, but this, the Holly Hunter film that we watched tonight, I had not seen it since it came out and I'd forgotten how, delightful it was you know we're gonna have to sit down and um maybe after next week and talk about how we're gonna go into august in the fall and one of the films that i wanted you to think about it's one of my favorite books ever that was made to film is big fish by daniel wallace yeah i think that would be a good one because it's storytelling extraordinaire um, and it has such wonderful actors and Jessica Lang's in it. And um, I just think that would be a good one. So you be thinking of films to, that you want to watch and I'll be thinking of films that I want to watch, but um, I will leave tonight to, since I've got maybe this much left on that film uh, to watch at the very end. And then I'm gonna go watch Crimes in the Heart. So. Thank you, Robert, for joining me again on our book and film club. We're having so much fun. Um, we have not, have you seen Marcy Henna's new film? That it's on net, Amazon now. No, I've not seen it yet, no. Well, we might wanna do her film coming up this fall because it's a lovely story. It has Corbin Berenson, it has uh, Melissa Gilbert. It has a lot of people you recognize um, yeah. in the film. And I think that would be a good one. And since she's one of our authors. Yeah, well, maybe she'll come on and join us. Oh, she will. She's, we've been having a blast talking to her all this week with Breathless Bubbles and Book. She would love that. And we have so many films that, books that have gone to film, we might start out the fall just watching some of those, like The Help, mm -hmm. like The Glass Castle, 
like same kind of different as me, eat, pray, love. Um, you know, I could go on and on and on. So, but you think about once and I'll be thinking about, and then we'll get together because we're going to be talking tomorrow night too, or tomorrow afternoon. And so maybe you'll come up with a few by then and we can work on that because, but we've got Barefoot in the Park and then we've got back to back Doris Day films coming up, everybody who's watching. So you don't want to miss it. There's nothing more fun to me than a Doris Day film. And did you ever get to go see Man's Favorite Sport? No. Okay. You got to watch it. Because it's, it's 1960s, early 60s, the pillbox hat, the martinis, the smoking cigarettes, you know, and driving convertibles. It's San Francisco, and it is, it's not San Francisco. Yeah, there's a scene in it, I think. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, maybe so. But anyway, it's, it's one that I think you'll get a kick out. And it has Rock Hudson and Paula Prentice and adorable sidekick to Paula Prentice and, and some other great character actors. So watch that one when you get a chance and just have a good weekend. And I will see you tomorrow night and I'll see everybody next time on our Book to Film Club. So get your popcorn going and we'll see you at the movies. We're gonna be barefoot in the park. In the park. That's right. Okay. Thank you, Robert. We'll see you see soon. Bye-bye.